Hello, yogis. Welcome to, oh, a bit of a bad hair day. My hair mod when the camera's crooked. Welcome to your headstand tutorial. Okay, oh, it's still a bit crooked. Stands. Lots and lots of benefits to them. Let's not go on about them. Um, main one is gets your circulation flowing, purify, pur purifies, purifies your blood, heart, and lungs. Um, any inversion is awesome for your body and your mind. Just make sure when you're practicing your headstand that you are inhaling and exhaling nice and slowly so you don't want that sort of rapid shallow breathing and that's going to help you hold the pose for longer. Okay, let's start. So we start in with stage one. Okay, so stage one is our preparation and walking our feet in towards our head. Come into tabletop. Lower your forearms down, take a hold of your biceps and then bring them out in front. Interlace your fingers and press down gently through your wrists and middle fingers. So this is roughly where you need to have your arms. You don't want your elbows to flay too far out to the sides or else it will feel really unstable when you start to rise up. Interlace your fingers and with your head, you're going to bring it down to your mat and the very top part of your head will be in contact with your mat. You gently press your head into your palms. So let's start with that. So bring the top of your head down, press gently into the palms and then lift, tuck your toes and lift your hips up high to the sky so if you're coming into your down dog. Bring your toes in together and just maybe stay here and work on noticing where the weight is. So if there's a lot of weight in the top of your head, you may need to work on building up your upper body strength before you can begin to come into the second stage. So that might be where you're at. So just with each stage, listening to your body, noticing where it's at and not getting too excited and coming straight into flicking your legs up into the air and falling down and being disappointed in yourself. And that's another mistake people make too is they think that they've got to fling their legs up in the air and, and that's not it at all. It's all about control and engagement using your breath to come into it. So let's come back to our stage one. Hands are in place. Top of the head comes down, straighten out through the legs. Walk the toes in towards your face and you'll start to feel your hips, the weight transfer over your head. So it's a slight back extension. Hold here for up to 20 to 25 breaths. Once you can maintain this hold, for 25 breaths, then you can come into the next stage. So this is still stage one. Either your feet are back longer and you're pressing out through straight legs, or you've walked your toes in towards your face. You need to come back down. So that's stage one. Second stage is we're going to begin to lift our feet up off the mat and bring both feet up with bent knees. So come back down. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, walk them in, maybe lift one foot up, lower it down, lift the other up, lower it down. Maybe you'd like to try lifting foot up. Hold here. Start to come into that slight back extension. So you'll feel like your sitting bones are coming back over your head. Hold here for as long as you can. 
point your toes. I'm going to come back down. I'm not obviously going to hold it forever. Not that I can. And we'll do the next stage. So once you're in that bent knee stage, see if you can hold it for up to, once again, 20 to 25 breaths. So the next stage, stage three, we're going to begin to lift the legs up high to the sky. So when we do, we just want to engage the legs and press the inner thighs together and point the toes. And the weight is through the arms, not the top of the head. So that's why you need that good upper body strength through a regular practice to be able to maintain the lift up. Let's come back down. Get the arms into lace the fingers. Press them gently into the wrists and little fingers. Top of the head comes down. Straight it out through the legs. Walk the feet as close to your face as you can. Bend one knee, bend the other. And then start to lift both legs up at the same time. Straightening out, pointing the toes, pressing the inner thighs together, holding here for as long as you can, working up to 25 breaths again. Breathing in nice and slow. Down, trying to dismount nice and gently. I'm still working on that. Mine are never really that graceful. And come straight into stage four, which is resting in balasana, child's pose. So your knees are together, your arms are alongside you with your forehead down on the mat. And this just allows for the pressure exchange from that inversion from being upside down. And just hold your child pose for anywhere between 10 breaths and 2 minutes. So just a couple of things to note. I mentioned earlier about flinging the legs up in the air, which is a very common mistake. Um, that's not going to get you anywhere. It's just like doing some weird sort of handstand, headstand combo. You need to maintain your engagement through your body. You need to have that upper body strength. And remembering that the weight is in, in your upper body rather than the top of your head. Um, a few people mention maybe using a wall, but I don't really think the wall helps with practicing. Some people it, it does, and by all means, if you feel more comfortable using the wall, you can do so. But personally, um, I find if, if you use a wall, you're going to start to engage a whole different set of muscles that you don't need to be able to hold the pose. And as soon as you take the wall away, then um, you're back at square one anyway. Um, another option is if you're able to bring your knees up and then straighten up out through your legs, you can, but you can't hold for very long. You can maybe have someone, your partner, husband, wife, whoever, hold your ankles gently just so you can feel that um, sensation of being upside down. Uh, I know when I was practicing, uh, a, a fear held me back so I could get up and my teacher could see I had the strength to hold, but I was scared of lifting my legs up. So she gently held my legs around the ankles just to give me that um, feeling of, yeah, okay, well, I'm upside down and this actually feels quite good. It doesn't feel as scary as I thought it was. So that is a good option. Just make sure they hold them lightly. And if they feel like, if, if you feel like you're going to fall, you know, obviously forward, then that support person is there. But once again, it's best how I learned 
um, is to learn it in these stages. So by gradually holding each stage for up to that 25 breath mark before moving on to the next stage. So doing it nice and slowly and mindfully um, with intention and integrity as well. Hope that helped.